Well hello internet and welcome to part 14 of my C video tutorial. In the last part of the tutorial I covered how to convert from base 10 to numerous other different bases being base 8 and binary and hexadecimal. At the end of that tutorial I left you with a homework assignment which was how do we write code to convert from all of those other bases back to base 10. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. If you missed any of the previous tutorials, I provide a link in the upper right hand corner to them. And otherwise, I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so basically in the last tutorial we talked about how exactly base 8 works. And pretty much this shows us exactly how we're going to be able to convert from base 8 back to base 10, as you can see here. But let's focus in even further. So let's say we have 455, which is a representation in base 8 of the base 10 number 301. So basically we have to figure out exactly how to take what we see here on the screen and simply create it inside of a function. So what are some of the different things we're going to need to do? Well basically our function we're going to be creating is going to be passed the number to convert in string form. Also it's going to be passed the original base of that number that's going to be passed in so that we know what we're going to be converting from and also the number of numbers in the character array so that we know exactly how many different numbers we're going to be working with. Then what we're going to need to do is create a loop that's going to start at the highest point of the array which is going to be this guy right here and then it's going to slowly decrement itself down. Then for each number inside of our array we're going to have to get the original base which is going to be 8 in this situation if we're working with base 8 and then we're going to have to take it to the power of an increasing number from 0 to 1 to 2 depending upon the total size of our array. Then we're going to have to multiply the character that's going to be passed in which is going to be 5, 5, 4 based off of this guy right here times these guys right here or this line that I described previously. And then of course we're going to have to add the result to all of the other results to get our final base 10 representation. So that's enough explaining so let's jump over into the code. Okay, so here we are, and there's a couple new things here I'm going to have to have in my arsenal. I'm going to get myself two new libraries. I'm going to use a math library, and it's going to be used to be able to calculate the power. And I'm also going to get a C-type library, and that is going to be used for checking whether an alpha number has been passed inside or a letter passed in so that we'll be able to convert from hexadecimal to base 10. But I'm going to keep this nice and simple and I'm just first off going to go through exactly how to convert regular numbers and ignore the letters for the moment. So this guy's going to return an integer and I'm going to go base 2 decimal is the name of it. And I said previously that we're going to be past a character array and I'm just simply going to call it number. Also said I'm going to get the base that we are going to be moving from, well we'll just think of it as base 8 for now, size of number which is going to be the number of different characters in our character array. Then we're going to be adding up results over and over again and the result is going to start off at 0 and also we're going to have to the power of which is going to be the increasing value that we we're going to be using it over and over again. So if it's base 8 it's going to be 8 to the power of 0 and then it's going to be 8 to the power of 1 and so forth and so on. So this guy's going to increase starting off at 0. So of course it would make sense to give it a value of 0. Okay and if we move on here then we said we're going to need to cycle through all the letters in the array starting with the last one or the farthest to the right. So what we're going to do is create ourselves a for loop and I'm going to have i is equal to and then inside of this I'm going to have to get the size of number which is passed into our function and then I'm going to subtract 2 from it. The reason I'm going to do that is because the indexes of course start at 0 and also I want to avoid coming in contact with this null character. So that's the reason why we're subtracting 2 from it. And then I'm going to continue on while i is greater than or equal to 0 and we're going to decrement i. And all of the code of course is available in a link in the description for this video. Okay then basically what we're going to do next is we're going to copy the style that we talked about previously. It's basically going to be let's just say 4 times 8 to the power of 1 plus and we'll just say 5 times 8 to the power of 0 and so forth and so on. So to copy that style what we're going to do is say result plus or equal to 
and then we're going to say number and get the number out of our array that we passed over inside of here and a shortcut way to work with this is to subtract and I'm gonna put zero inside of here and then I'll be able to directly multiply times the power of the base from that we're moving from which is going to be this guy right here and then to the power of which is this guy right here which is going to be represented by this one and we're gonna to have to increment that of course as we go on and then that is the end of it and then what we need to do is just go to the power of and increment it and that is all we need to do pretty simple huh but of course it's not gonna work for hexadecimals but we'll get to that in a second just want to keep this nice and simple so I'm going to say in the base D is equal or equals D in base 10 and print that out on our screen and of course that's going to be pass number which is going to be the number that was passed inside of here and the base from that we're moving from and then the result so in essence this is going to say the number you passed in that was in the base of let's just say 8 equals our final result in the base of 10 and that's what we're gonna print out on our screen and then on top of that let's say we want to return the result and there we go and I just have all of the code that I had used previously in the last part of the tutorial that's going to convert from the base and we're going to use that just to check to make sure that we have the right answers and then let's just continue working with the base of eight just like we had before so what I'm going to do here is just create a character array I'm going to call this number to convert is equal to let's say 74 and put it in quotes of course and then what we can do is say base to decimal that is what I called it isn't it yep base to decimal and we're gonna pass in number to convert and it's base 8 and we're also going to pass in the size of it so I'm just gonna put size of number to convert compile it and execute and here we can see our results previously and if we specifically look right here 60 in base 8 is equal to 74 so that was 60 as a base 10 is equal to in base 8 74 and you can see here 74 in base 8 equals 60 in base 10 so our program worked only problem is it's not going to work for hexadecimal so let's think about exactly what are we going to have to do to make this work for hexadecimal? One of the things we have to think about is exactly how key codes work because we're going to have to convert letters A through F into actual numbers. So what I'm going to do here first off is I'm going to just figure out exactly what A is. I know what it is, but I'm just doing this just to explain exactly my thought process. And we could go through here and we could say A and then let's say that we also want to do an uppercase A and figure out how we're gonna handle that if they send that in. And then just for the heck of it, let's also come in here and go B, C, D, E, and F. And we can just put those inside of there as well because what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is set these for lowercase because that makes sense to me. And then we're gonna have to change that to A and this to B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, file save that, compile, execute, and here we can see that the lowercase a is 97, b is 98, 99, 100, 101, 102. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is to convert any a's that are set in to the number 10, I'm just going to take the 97, and if they send me an uppercase letter a, I'm going to convert it into a lowercase, and then I'm going to subtract 87 from it. So exactly how are we going to do that? Well, let's just jump back up here and I'm going to just change the program that we already created, which is base to decimal. So let's think about exactly what are we going to need to change. Well, the for loop isn't going to change at all. That's basically still going to work for us. One thing, however, that we are going to need to change is this guy right here. So let's think about exactly how we're going to change that. Let's get rid of this. First thing we're going to need to do is check to see if they sent me an alpha character. And to do that, I just go is alpha, and then I'm going to go number i, and I'm going to perform a little bit different result here, a different calculation, if they sent me a letter instead of a number, which I'm used to working with. Well, then what I need to do is convert my letter into the right character code and then subtract 87. So, for example, like I mentioned before, convert a lowercase letter a into 10, along with all the other letters we might come in contact with. So, I'm just going to call this character code, and I'm going to do an integer cast, and then I'm going to go to lower, and then I'm just going to take the number, actually the letter in this situation, from our array, and then I'm going to subtract 87 from it. 
because that's going to work for me. Then basically I'm going to copy this exact style here, except I'm going to make one little change. So there's result, just like before. But instead of this guy right here, what I'm going to do is put my character code inside of there, because that's a number I want to work with. Everything else can stay exactly the same. It's also going to make sense to throw an else statement inside of here, like this. This is going to work for everything that's not a letter, and I can leave my power of outside of both of them since they're both going to need it. And that's it. That's the only changes I need to make. So let's come down here and see if it actually worked for us. So let's change this to 3C, and then we're going to have a number to convert, and then we're going to put 16. We can get rid of this because this is no longer useful for us. And that's it. That's the only thing we need to change. And then if we calculate all this out, you can see that everything worked out. Just like we did previously, 60 in base 16 is going to be equal to 3C. Here we passed 3C and we wanted it to be converted into a base 10, which is exactly what happened. So that is how we convert from all the other different bases back to base 10. So hopefully you like that because you guys ask me for homework all the time. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to continue talking about how we can work with binary numbers and a whole bunch of other things. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.